Good morning and welcome to assembly drawing. During this section we're going to look at drawing off individual components in an assembly format which is called an assembly drawing. Take the assembly drawing and then section the drawing to be able to see all the individual components on the inside. And then lastly you need to complete it in the prescribed time. Time is very very important when it comes to assembly drawing. But in order to do this, we'll be looking at the following. The first one we'll be looking at is the parts list. In a parts list, you have four different types of descriptions. You have items, you have description, quantity, and material. The items is numbered. Dependent on the number of items, it's numbered. And then you have the names of the items, which is the description of the items. And then the quantity, how many of the item is there in the assembly. In this case, there's two piston rings. Then the type of material it has been manufactured from. These materials are specifically used in the design of the assembly. Okay, let's look at the components. Okay, these are the components we'll be looking at. The first one is the small end bush, which is given by the parts list. The second one is the gudgeon pin, number two, you can see there. The third one is the piston, number three, it's given there, there's one of it, one and one, one of each. The fourth component is the connecting rod. There's one of it, made out of cast iron. The fifth component is the piston ring. Two of it, made out of high carbon steel, as you can see there. All these need to fit together in an assembly. Very important, make sure that when you assemble components, you'll only use the side views. In other words, one look at the piston there, we have that view. If you section it, you can see everything on the inside, which will act as a side view. If you look at component number two, which is the gudgeon pin, if you cut it through the center, because it's a hole there, these lines will become solid. And then you will section that all the way through. Same with the small end bush. Looking at the connecting rod. This will not be drawn in the assembly. This is just to get extra information of the dimensions on this side view there. And that there is a ring. The piston ring. If you cut it through the center, these small edges will be sectioned. But then that will just be... An open section there. So looking at this part, when you section this part there, if you cut it through the center, you'll have section lines there. Because that's a hole, these lines will just become solid and sectioned all the way through, solid, solid, and section. And that's basically what needs to be done. When you do an assembly, make sure that all components are sectioned. So we'll be using one two, three, four, five. Those are the components that will be put together. Now, how do we put it together? In most cases, you need some engineering knowledge. But for students, it's only important to know, in most cases, the diameters and, of, and the positioning of the component. Firstly, this is what you need to look at. Let's look at part number one. We've got a diameter of 26 and 34. You need to locate similar diameters in the next part and the next part. You're going to match up these diameters and it will give you an idea where these components will fit. So we've got 26, 10, and 34 going next door. We've got 26. Aha, we've got a match 26 and 26. In other words, that they will most likely fit through there. And because when we go back to the parts list, one can see that 
part number one there's only one quantity there it shows only one in part number two only one of it so these two will fit together it's the only parts of each where these two will need to fit into one another because of the 26 millimeter diameter then part number three there's one of it part number four one and part number five is two of it so let's go look at the components again so we've got 26 and 26 that will fit into one another let's go to part number three and see if we can locate similar diameters to fit these in there there we've got the diameter of 26 that gives you a clue if we go straight across we can see the length of that hole through the piston and uh, the diameter there is 26 now if you look at that length and this length you can see we have a length there of 88 on the inside and there we have 88 so we can see that that will fit right through there with this part here which is a diameter sorry a length now this is the positioning when you look at the length you look at the positioning the positioning of this one look at 88 and 88 there but the diameter already tells you that it will go through there and fit in there so we have this small part in the center there this one fitting right in the center at that point okay next thing we need to look for further diameters we've got still a diameter of 34 there and 18 on the inside there so let's go look for it going on further that's too large that's too large 50 40 34 there's our diameter of 34 when we go straight across the hole shows 34 there and the width is 30 now that width will be used for positioning if we go back to component one we can see there's 30 millimeters there so that's 30 and that 30 is a match so we've got 34 and 34 that will fit exactly inside there so this tell you with these two already fitting at that point this connecting rod will fit vertically right there in the center the last part that we have here part number five we've got the outside diameter of 104 and inside diameter of 92. now let's go see if we can locate this diameter on any of these components we know that these are the diameters are very small these diameters are also very small it won't fit on the but if you look at these diameters diameters it is very large we got 100 millimeters there let's go look at these grooves we've got six millimeters on both sides so from there to there it's six millimeters and on the other side it's six millimeters 100 minus the 12 will give you 88 from there to there but now we cannot find this diameters on there you need engineering knowledge for this these piston rings will fit in these grooves to be able to help with compression during engine operation piston rings never fit tightly around the piston they display like a spring force it is some deflection deflecting so that 92 will fit nicely in there where the rings will sit nicely there at that point the reason why there's two of these rings this is where the clue is there's two of them and that's the only point where there's two grooves so you will assemble these rings in there the total assembly i will show to you what it will look like in inventor what we have here i have drawn up this whole assembly in inventor there's the whole piston fitting together in inventor you have the gudgeon pin there you have the piston rings at this point one and two there's the gudgeon pin there's the piston there's the connecting rod and if you look at on the inside right here on the inside you won't be able to see it in the piston fits over that point there 
So let's show you the assembly. There's our piston. Make it a little bit larger. I'm going to project a view from there. That's the scale coming up there. I'm going out to the side. There we have the section. Okay. Now let's go have a closer look of this. These are my piston rings. That is my piston as a whole. That is my gudgeon pin going through the center. That's the bush fitting over the gudgeon pin. And then we have the actual connecting rod fitting over the bush. There's some clearance there to show that it needs, it's a part that needs to move. That's why there's clearance. And yes, that is what the section will look like. If I delete the connecting rod, you can see it disappears. Let's go back. If I delete the gudgeon pin and go back here, you can see it disappears there. Let's go back and delete some more components. If I delete the bush there, you can see that the bush will disappear. If I go and delete these rings, one and two, you'll see that the rings has disappeared there. And I'm going to delete this whole part. And there's nothing there. Let's go and undo. Undo. Let's look at that. There's my piston. Undo. Here's my bush. It's back. My piston rings are back. I'm going to carry on with undo. Yes. My gudgeon pin should be back. There's the gudgeon pin. And let's go undo again. Yes. And there is my connecting rod. So uh, that's the end of sectioning for this week. Try all the other exercises. Use the diameters. Use positioning. And uh, produce drawings like this based on the side views. Thank you very much.